You're listening to Nightlight. Hello and welcome to another Bible prophecy edition of Nightlight. With me on the program is eschatologist Daniel Clark, speaking to us from Queensland, Australia. Daniel, welcome back to Nightlight. Well, thank you, Chris, for inviting me back on your program. It's been a while since we've done an interview, and during that time we've seen a world full of changes take place as we head closer to the final days before Jesus returns. Yes, absolutely. And Daniel, I know you've been very busy adding more to your end-time study and teaching materials. Uh, True, Chris. There are so far, there's 12 videos and seven books and some easy to understand timelines, all aimed at helping folk to easily understand the sequence of events to happen from now to the rapture and beyond. And all these are available on my updated website, endtimesofficial.com. That's all one word, endtimesofficial.com. Nightlight, keeping you in tune with the times. Daniel, if we have time, you could explain more about your end-time teaching material later in this program. But now, let's get right to the major topic of our interview. It's a question that I've been eager to address on this program. And listeners, if you turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, and I'll read it to you in a minute, you'll find what is commonly known as Daniel's 70 weeks prophecy, with the 70 weeks divided into seven weeks, 62 weeks, and one week. And the question is, has the 70th week in this prophecy already been fulfilled, as some are teaching, or is it a future event yet to happen? Daniel, I know this is a topic that you're very passionate about. Why is that? Why? Because it causes some to doubt God's word. And because this teaching that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled, it steals away the very reference that Jesus pointed us to in Matthew 24, 15, a beacon that would indicate his soon return. Uh, this this false teaching is, has led to other false teachings that claim that there should be no third temple and no daily sacrifice and no antichrist, and the list just goes on. I know, it's ridiculous. Uh, the idea that the he in Daniel 9.27 is not referring to the antichrist who is to come, but rather to claim and to teach that the he in Daniel 9.27 is Jesus and that Jesus is the one to cause the daily sacrifice to cease, as mentioned in uh, Daniel 9.27. Well, well, it's it's heresy yeah, or a gross misunderstanding of Scripture, to say the least. Yes. Yes, true, Jesus was the end of sacrifice, as Hebrews 10 highlights. But the daily sacrifice referred to in Daniel 9.27 is pointing to, to something very different, as we'll cover shortly. End time news and views. Okay, Daniel, let's begin with the question, why do the majority of Bible teachers of the past and present teach that there is going to be a seven-year period happening immediately before Jesus returns. Well, Jesus talks about it, or rather in Matthew 24, 15, Jesus referred us to read and understand the prophecies of Daniel to discover that there is a seven-year time period, which we refer to as Daniel's 70th week, that needs to come to pass before Jesus returns. And within that 70th week is the sign of his coming, which to, uh, is to see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Right. Well, look, Daniel, why don't you just give for our listeners a brief explanation, a background, if you like, to Daniel's 70-week prophecy? Uh, sure. Uh, I could begin with a brief history, and, and then we could uh, that could serve as a, a pathway to our, our current debate concerning Daniel 9.27, to discover whether Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled, or rather, to prove from Scripture that Daniel's 70th week could not have been fulfilled. Yes, thanks. That would be very helpful. Well, we learned throughout the book of Daniel that because of uh, Israel's disobedience to God, uh, Jerusalem and the temple were to be destroyed and uh, Israel was to be carried away into captivity to be in exile in Babylon for 70 years. Right. Uh, then it picks up in uh, Daniel chapter 9. We learn how the, uh, the prophet Daniel understood that those 70 years in exile were almost complete. And that's when uh, Daniel began to pray for Israel. He was in anticipation that his people would soon be able to return to Jerusalem uh, to rebuild the temple and the city. That's right. And then in response to Daniel's prayer, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and gave Daniel skill 
skill and understanding, it says in the Bible. Then Gabriel uh, gave Daniel the 70-week prophecy, the famous 70-week prophecy concerning Israel, as it is recorded in Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Well, perhaps, Daniel, this would be a good place for me to read the passage in its entirety for our listeners, and then afterwards you can break it down verse by verse. So this is Daniel 9, 24 through 27, the angel Gabriel speaking to the prophet Daniel. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, Daniel, take us in to have a closer look at that passage. Okay, uh, well, then I'll begin at uh, Daniel 9, 24, where the angel Gabriel gave Daniel a list of things that must happen before the prophecy could be considered fulfilled. You know, Chris, uh, I'm a very visual person and I like to teach and explain with timelines. Uh, So I prepared uh, two videos on the topic uh, in my Jesus Explains YouTube channel. Uh, perhaps I could pass those links on to you and maybe you could uh, put them in your description. Oh, yes, for sure. I'll include those links in the description portion below. But for now... Yes, for now I'll go ahead and, and read the scripture. Uh, so Gabriel began by telling Daniel that 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews, and upon thy holy city, which is Jerusalem, to one, finish the transgression, and two, to make an end of sins, and three, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and four, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and five, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and six, to anoint the most holy, which is Jesus. And obviously, Daniel, all of those things haven't happened yet, and this would be the first indicator that the prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. Yes, that's a fact, no matter how some may argue the opposite. I'll continue reading. Uh, Daniel nine twenty five and 26, it says, Therefore, know and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Now, we're going to cover all these points in a moment. For now, I'll continue reading. Now, this is verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, that's 62 weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of war desolations are determined. Daniel, maybe this would be a good point at which to explain how one week can mean seven years prophetically speaking. Sure. Uh, Well, the Hebrew word for a set of seven is Shabu or Sheba, uh, or some say uh, Shibim, uh, to mean a set of seven years. But either way, prophetically, it means a set of seven years, as it is applied in the Daniel 9, 24 to 27 prophecy. I suppose in English we use the word dozen in a similar way to mean a set of 12. Exactly. That's a good parallel. In English, we could say uh, we could use the word a dozen 
to mean a set of 12, but in Hebrew, they use the word shibium to mean a set of seven years, or at least that's my understanding from looking up the meaning, me not uh, speaking Hebrew. Right. And maybe you could also explain to our listeners how the 70 years that Israel was in exile in Babylon differs from the 70-week prophecy given to Daniel at the end of Daniel chapter 9. Uh, yeah, yes, that's uh, that's a good point to cover. Uh, perhaps I should address these points now um, before I read the last portion of the 70-year prophecy, the verse that deals with Daniel's 70th week. Uh, so those 70 years when Israel was in exile were 70 years, 70 literal years. However, the 70-week prophecy in Daniel 9, 24 to 27 Each week represents a set of seven years. That's right. Therefore, we could read it this way, that Daniel 9, 24 to 27 prophecy could read that 70 weeks or seven times 70 years, which is 490 years, are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to bring, make an end of sin, uh, to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy, and that ain't Israel today. Right, and as we said before, this prophecy obviously hasn't been fulfilled yet. No, not yet. But God is not finished with Israel. This prophecy has not yet been completed and won't be completed until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, which happens at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the end of the Great Tribulation, as Luke twenty one twenty four lays out. That's right. God has still got a, a set of seven years to go before the vision of the prophecy can be sealed up. Uh, That's exactly what the uh, 70-week prophecy specifies. Then is there a reason why the angel Gabriel, who gave this prophecy to Daniel, just didn't say that 490 years have been determined upon Daniel's people and leave it at that? Could you explain why Gabriel basically said that 70 sets of seven years have been determined upon your people? Well, well, unlike the uh, 70 years that uh, Israel was in exile in Babylon, the 490 years of the Daniel 9, 24 to 27 prophecy is broken into sections with certain events to happen within those sections. Could you outline those sections and events? Sure. We learn from Daniel 9, 25 that from the time the commandment was given for the Jews to return to Babylon, from Babylon to Jerusalem to rebuild the city and the temple until Messiah the Prince, which is Jesus, Uh, would be seven weeks plus 60 and two weeks, a total of 69 weeks, translated to mean 483 years. 69 times 7 is 483 years. Right. Now, the question arises, and this is very important to understand so that we can dispel the theory that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled. Do the words until Messiah the Prince mean until Jesus was born? or until he was crucified. And the next portion of the prophecy answers that question. It says, Daniel uh, 9.26, and the prophecy backs up a little here. It says that after 62 weeks, Jesus would be cut off, which means killed, crucified. And therefore, from the words of prophecy and from history now past, we can understand that uh, the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the temple must have been completed in the first seven weeks of those 70-week prophecy. Right. And it was. And, uh, and then there is another 62 weeks until Jesus was crucified. Yes. So translated, that means it took 49 years to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. And we know from John uh, 2.20, I think it is, John 2.20, that it took... 46 years of those 49 years to rebuild the temple. That's right. And then after the first seven weeks or 49 years, there was another 62 weeks or 434 years until Jesus was crucified, making a total of 483 years from the time the prophecy began until Jesus was crucified. That leaves one prophetic week or seven years left before the prophecy can be completed. That's right. And try as some may, they cannot stretch the prophecy to claim that Jesus was uh, caused the sacrifice to cease in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. That is not what the prophecy says, and no one can interpret it to mean that. Now, Jesus was the end of sacrifice. That's true, as we learn from uh, Hebrews chapter 10. 
But Jesus accomplished that goal at the end of the 69th week, not halfway through the 70th week. Well, that's a good point, Daniel, that Jesus put an end to sacrifice when he was crucified at the end of the 69th week and not halfway through the 70th week. Exactly. Lighting your path through the end times. You're with Nightlight. Okay, so so now I'll read the last portion of the 70-year prophecy. This is the part that deals with the topic of our discussion. Uh, This is the passage that defines Daniel's 70th week, the final week of the 70-year prophecy that needs to be fulfilled uh, to complete the checklist found in uh, Daniel 9, 24. Okay, so again, I'm going to add my brief commentary throughout, and then we're going to examine how some Hebrew or so-called Hebrew Bible scholars try to teach that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled. Yes, it'd be very interesting to know how this new doctrine got started and how it could take root in the hearts of some Christians. We're going to cover that in a minute, but first, I'll, I'll read Daniel 9.27 with my commentary added. Um, here we go. And he, the Antichrist, not Jesus, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, for now, it would only be speculation to guess who the many could be referring to. But the week is definitely referring to the final seven years of the 70-week prophecy. And the verse continues. And in the midst of the week, he, the Antichrist, not Jesus, shall cause the sacrifice to, and the oblation to cease. For the overspreading of abominations shall he make it desolate. Elsewhere in prophecy, uh, we see that this is referred to as the time of desolation or the time of great tribulation that would uh, immediately precede the return of Jesus. Okay, so the verse continues. Uh, Uh, even until the consummation. This is referring to the time when Jesus shall consume the Antichrist with his mouth and the brightness of his coming. That's 2 Thessalonians 2.8. And then Daniel 9.27 concludes with these words, And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This is referring to the vials of God's wrath that are going to be poured out after the rapture, as described throughout Revelation chapter 16. Daniel, do you think it will be easy for Christians to identify the Antichrist when he is revealed? The popular preachers and teachers say he's going to sign some sort of a peace treaty for seven years. Uh, Good questions, Chris. Uh, I'd like to say that it would be helpful for teachers and preachers and all Christians alike if they'd use the correct words and correct terms as they're presented in God's word. Prophecy states that when the Antichrist is revealed, he shall confirm what balanced scripture calls the Holy Covenant, not a peace treaty, although the event will bring in a short period of peace and safety. In Daniel 9.27, it is simply called the Covenant, but in Daniel 11.28 and 30, this same covenant is called the Holy Covenant, meaning it is going to be a religious agreement of some sort. Right. And secondly, nowhere does the Bible refer to the entire seven years of Daniel's 70th week as the seven-year tribulation. That's right. Rather, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.3 reveals that in the first half of Daniel's 70th week, it's going to be a time of peace and safety. Enough peace and safety for the Jews to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem and resume their daily sacrifice. Yes. And then in the midst of Daniel's 70th week, in the middle of those seven years... The Antichrist is going to cause the Jews' daily sacrifice to cease so that he can sit in the temple as God and then shall come sudden destruction, a time of the events of the Great Tribulation. Yes, indeed, that seems to make better sense. Even now, many world leaders use the term peace and security when referring to their hopes for the Middle East. Exactly. It all falls in line with the terms used in the Bible. But it is misleading to use the term seven-year tribulation when referring to Daniel's 70th week or the last seven years. That's right. And it is also misleading to use the term peace treaty or peace deal when referring to what the Bible calls the covenant or the holy covenant. Correct terms help to promote a better understanding. Daniel, you say that the Antichrist, when he's revealed, shall try to distance himself as far as possible from the Daniel 9.27 prophecy. Would you like to elaborate on that? And how will Christians know that Daniel's 70th week has begun? 
uh, certainly. Uh, when the Antichrist is first revealed, even though prophecy refers to him as a vile person, uh, Daniel 11.21 shows us that he shall come in and obtain the kingdom with peace and flatteries. Uh, it must be pointed out here, Chris, that uh, the Bible refers to empires as kingdoms and emperors and even world leaders are referred to as kings. And therefore, we can understand that the Bible refers to the final government of the new world order as a kingdom. Yes. And its uh, leaders are referred to as kings. We know from Daniel seven twenty three and 24 that when the Antichrist arises, he shall need to subdue three of the ten kings who will be governing the new world order at that time. That's right. And then when they all agree to give their kingdom and their allegiance to him as a supreme leader of the new world order, he shall then give them power to rule with him as kings. That's uh, Revelation 17, 12 and 13 reveals that. That's right. So... We know that this world leader, who will be the Antichrist, he'll confirm the Holy Covenant with the Jews, and this is going to allow them to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. We can be sure that this world event will make news at that time, so the Jews are going to proclaim him as their long-awaited Messiah, who has brought peace to Israel and allowed them to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. That's right. Uh, Jesus told the Jews of his day that... Um, you know, he said, I come in my father's name and, and they rejected him as their Messiah. And Jesus went on to say that if another comes in his name, him they shall receive as their Messiah. So this will be a fulfillment of the prophecy. It's found in uh, John five forty three. Interesting. So, however, Christians who understand their Bible prophecy will know that Daniel's 70th week has begun with the confirmation of this covenant. And this will allow the Jews to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. Alternatively, Christians who think that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled will not recognize the signs of the times. I can only see confusion ahead for Christians who think that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled. I don't see how they see the future playing out if there's no Antichrist, no third temple, no seven years and so on. Do they believe the Lord can come at any time or he's not coming or or what? Exactly. In believing uh, that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled, they're throwing away the very beacon of light that Jesus gave in Matthew twenty four fifteen that will shine a light along the pathway to his second coming. And as far as I can understand, those who believe there, there or don't believe there will be a seven-year period, a specific seven-year period uh, before Jesus returns, won't be expecting the new world order and they won't be expecting the governing council of 10 kings and they won't be expecting the Antichrist and they won't be expecting the third Jewish temple with its daily sacrifice that goes along with it. Well, not at this stage in their minds of disbelief anyhow. But And I don't really know what they're going to believe or not believe uh, when these end time events begin to unfold. But everyone has to believe something. So they will either continue to believe lies or they'll have to change their minds when uh, they see the truth happening. I suppose that's why a correct understanding of the Daniel 9.27 prophecy is so important because we could see these events unfold within a short period of time, even at our ripe old age, Daniel. Uh, definitely, Chris. Uh, during our lifetime, we've seen how the world has changed in just one generation. Even since the beginning of this decade, we've seen how quickly the whole world was corralled into an arena of obedience and submission during the so-called uh, COVID crisis. Almost overnight, the whole world was forced to comply with the dictates of powers from without our elected governments, but implemented and enforced through those governments, as we saw here in Australia and, and even in Canada, especially. Uh, it's like it was a, just one global experiment in social engineering. But the, the COVID crisis is small in comparison with what is coming. The globalists have their planned agenda that will force the nations of the world to accept their new world order. Therefore, we can expect to see further and greater unprecedented events happen that's going to cause the great nations of the world to come to their knees in submission to the agenda of the soon coming new world order and their plans for a global reset. Signs of the Times 
and let the Great Reset be a topic for another show, Daniel. But staying focused on the 70th week and the Daniel 927 controversy, anything you want to add to what you've already presented? Well, one objection that uh, some Christians correctly raise is that since Jesus There has been no need for sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin, that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And therefore, uh, there is reason to think that there will be no third temple and no animal sacrifice and therefore no 70th week. Well, of course, we as Christians understand that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice and there remains no need for the sacrifice of animals anymore for the forgiveness of sin. However, the unbelieving Jew doesn't understand nor accept this fact, and therefore they're biting at the bit to have a third temple built in Jerusalem. I have filmed a whole documentary with millions of views on this very topic. It's called The Coming Temple, and I'll put the link to it below. I mean, you only need to Google the Third Temple Institute to see how the Jews have their plans ready for a third temple and all the associated paraphernalia ready that goes with the temple. They even have the temple priests trained in readiness for when the opportunity presents itself. And you can search on YouTube to see how Jews are already having practice runs, so to speak, with the sacrifice of animals. Yes, the writing's on the wall and the signs are all about and they line up with ancient prophecy. They do indeed. All that proof, both in scripture and in the practical sense of how we see the Jews preparing. And yet there's a small but growing number of Christians who are teaching that Daniel's 70th week has already been fulfilled by claiming that Jesus was the one who caused the sacrifice to cease, as it's mentioned in Daniel 9.27. But do you have any idea of how this doctrine began and why is it that some Christians are being led astray by the misunderstanding of this scripture. Chris, I'll stress this truth once again, that many Christians probably don't realize that when the Antichrist is revealed, he's going to distance himself as far as possible and disassociate himself from the Daniel 9.27 prophecy because it reveals his true intentions. And again, even today, Satan is already working to distance himself from the Daniel 9.27 prophecy by having false teachers, even Christian teachers, promote the idea that Daniel's 70th week has already been fulfilled. But how? I mean, how can any Christian not understand the correct interpretation of the Daniel 9.27 prophecy? We've been warned by Jesus and Paul and Peter that in the last days many false teachers would arise claiming that Jesus is Lord, but shall lead many astray with their false teachings and false doctrines. Well, that certainly seems to be the case. So, okay, it's time to answer your question, Chris. Where did this lie begin, this teaching, this false teaching that Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled, and especially to address the false claim that the he in Daniel 9.27 is Jesus and that he is the one that causes the daily sacrifice to cease, as it is described in that verse? And you uh, also ask, where did it germinate and how did it take root in the heart of some Christians? Yes, I'm curious to hear. Okay, well, Bible's in hand and open to Daniel 9.27. Now, let's zero in and look at the main portion of that scripture that is in question. I'm going to begin by just reading the first part of Daniel 9.27, and it reads, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. It's the he in this prophecy that we need to examine. Is the he referring to Jesus or to the Antichrist? That is the question. Yes, I agree. That seems to be at the heart of the controversy. Is the he in Daniel 9.27 referring to Jesus or to the Antichrist? So what are your thoughts on the matter? Well, up until recent times, and it's always been thought and taught and accepted that the he was referring to the Antichrist and that he is the one that puts an end to the daily sacrifice mentioned in the whole passage. This understanding is confirmed by Daniel 8.11 and Daniel 11.31 and the context of the surrounding scriptures for those who uh, want to search the scriptures as uh, Acts 17.11 encourages us to do. And there they can find no, be no doubt 
that the Antichrist is the one that takes away the daily sacrifice. And then he sits in the temple of God as God, just as balanced scripture supports. Well, then how can it be that some are claiming that the he in Daniel 9.27 is Jesus if balanced scripture proves that the he is the Antichrist. Well, from what I've been able to discover, it began when someone who presents himself uh, to be some sort of a Hebrew grammar expert claimed that the he in Daniel 9.27 refers back to Prince the Messiah in the previous verse, claiming that the antecedent of he in Daniel 9.27 is Prince the Messiah in the previous verse. And can you prove from Scripture that this claim is not the case. Uh, Easy as pie. If anything, the antecedent of the he in Daniel 9.27 is the prince in the previous sentence, namely, the people of the prince, he that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, as found in Daniel 9.26. And even though this verse refers in part to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD, we learn from balanced scripture that this prophecy still has an ultimate fulfillment when the Antichrist makes Jerusalem desolate during the 42 months of great tribulation and sits in the temple of God. That's in Revelation 11, 1 and 2 and 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. Then it goes on, it says, uh, we go to Daniel 9.27, we can see that the he refers back to the prince, uh, the prince whose people shall come and destroy the city, and he shall confirm the covenant with many, and he shall take away the daily sacrifice, and he shall make it desolate. How much more proof do we need than that uh, through scripture, through balanced scripture, and beyond a shadow of a doubt that the he is referring to the Antichrist who is to come and not Jesus the Messiah? Well, Dan, you convinced me, and I'm sure you've helped our listeners to understand, to summarize, that there is still a definite seven-year period referred to as Daniel's 70th week that needs to be fulfilled immediately before Jesus returns, and that the he in Daniel 9.27 is the Antichrist, and he shall confirm a covenant with many for Daniel's 70th week, and that event shall usher in a brief three-and-a-half-year period of, in quotes, peace and safety that will allow the Jews to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem and resume their daily sacrifice. Then, In the middle of those last seven years is when he, the Antichrist, shall cause the Jews' daily sacrifice to cease so that he can sit in the temple as God and demand to be worshipped as God and above all that is called God. And that is when sudden destruction shall come upon all the world, when the three and a half year Great Tribulation begins. Shine it bright in the dark night. You're listening to Nightlight. Excellent summary, Chris. Uh, there is so much more that I would like to add to cover that ties in with Daniel's 70th week. So maybe we could uh, address this topic uh, at some other time soon. Uh, most certainly. Can you briefly tell us what those topics will be? Well, uh, I'd like to highlight the fact that the gap between the 69th week and the 70th week is for our benefit, that it gave the chance for the gospel to be taken to the Gentiles. That's right. And along with this thought, I'd like to point out uh, another incorrect term that has been popularized and freely used, and that is the term the church age. Nowhere in scripture can that be found. Nowhere. And if it's referring to the time between Pentecost and the time of the rapture, then we should be using the term the times of the Gentiles, during which time that blindness has happened in part, as happened to Israel. That's what the scripture says. Right. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in, exactly as Romans 11.25 says. Yes. And after that, the kingdom shall be returned to Israel when the times of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. And that comes at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the end of the Great Tribulation, as uh, Luke 21.24 and uh, Revelation 11 one and two establish, as well as other scriptures. Well, I'm sure our listeners will look forward to us 
covering those topics in a future program. Daniel, before we wrap up, would you like to tell us something about your website and how listeners can get a hold of your insightful and helpful end time study and teaching materials? Thanks for this opportunity, Chris. Uh, Besides winning souls to Jesus, my passion has always been to uh, better understand the sequence of events to happen from now to the rapture and beyond. Now, as we can see the day of Christ approaching, it is not only important to understand these events, but as Christians, we also need to share what we have discovered with others, for no scripture is of private interpretation. And therefore, I have produced what is called the End Time Seminar Series, as well as a host of other study and teaching material, which is all available on my recently updated website, endtimesofficial.com. That's all one word, endtimesofficial.com and there your listeners will find a wellspring of helpful information and you also have a YouTube prophecy channel called Jesus Explains Uh, yes, listeners will find access to all these avenues of understanding at my website endtimesofficial.com that's endtimesofficial.com well thank you Daniel for all that you shared and I'm already looking forward to the next time I truly look forward to that Chris thank you and may God continue to bless you and your listeners and please folks share the knowledge and if you look below I've included the links to Daniel's website and YouTube page as well as the coming temple documentary that I filmed a few years ago in Israel until the next time this is Chris Glynn signing out Please do share the content on this channel with others. And until the next time, may the Lord bless and keep you and make you a blessing. Bye for now.